Can you just talk a little bit about how you feel about doing this? All my life, you know, I've been like an easy size, maybe zero, you know. And then I had a kid at 39 and my body changed a little bit. And it's an imperceptible change. Maybe a lover will tell the difference. So much of it is in my mind. Uh, the big fashion companies don't care about what's important to you. Right. They care about what's important to them and largely that's bottom line. And insecurity sells. Like what would the fashion industry look like if every woman liked what she looked like and wasn't preoccupied with how to make herself look more this or less that? So can you talk about what your style says about you? I, I like to put things that don't necessarily go together. I want to interrupt people's idea of beauty because I think it's so narrow. Have you always been like that? I came into consciousness thinking how my brother is treated is different from how I'm treated and I don't like that. But the minute I realized that he had more privilege in terms of you know, freedoms and in terms of people believing him when he spoke or people admiring him when he did things that were brave, and when I did it, I got scolded, you know. Um, I particularly hated that people were so concerned with the draping of my body. Especially when I became uh, pre-puberty, my being a girl, whether I was wearing pants, whether the dress was too short, how I sat and therefore whether people could see the thing that covered my vagina. A certain kind of girl was covered and a certain kind of girl was not. In my politics, I work for people to have the choice. I don't want to make the choice for you. Can you talk about the assumptions that people have had about you and who you are based on how you dress? The assumption is that I, I'm a vegetarian. I love steak. I actually asked the question, why the fuck do people think I'm a vegetarian? The range of responses, like, you know, people with conscience, people who are very outspoken about political things, people who seem to be natural. I think people assume I'm straight. And I think the assumption rises now to, to, to the highest it's ever been because I have a small child. So they often ask him, how long were you with her father if they assume I'm not with him anymore? Against great obstacles, I went and had a kid. I had fibroids, I had endometriosis, I had blocked tubes, and I discovered this all when I actually um, did a one home insemination. And I went to the OBGYN once a year, but you know, fibroids, because of where it was located, they didn't see it. And then when I was 14 weeks pregnant, um, I woke up you know, in a pool of blood and had to be rushed to the hospital and was put on bed rest for six months for the rest of the pregnancy. You know, before I got pregnant, I imagined myself like this kind of like, you know, you know, picture of fertility, you know, I was just gonna be like all kinds of half naked. Going through New York City, I would wear these like cute little pregnant outfits. And it didn't happen because I was bleeding like a pig, like a stuck pig laid up in my bed, wow. um, throwing up, unable to move. Let's just say, you know, we got to the place where we at least were in peaceful negotiations, myself and my body. So many things happen to your body when you're pregnant. And it's the one time that everyone forgives you everything within the context of what your body should or shouldn't look like. But the minute the child comes out of you, everyone, the judgment begins again. <laughs> How do you express your, um, did you say defiance or interruption? Mm -hmm. I left Jamaica when I was 24 because it was too difficult to be gay there. I actually got sexually assaulted by a, a bunch of boys in a bathroom on my university campus when I came out as a lesbian. It was punishment for, for being a lesbian. Maybe right. attempt to convert me <laughs> to straightness. They have a term for it, it's called corrective rape. And it's complicated because you know it's tied up with patriarchy and power and your body belonging to the gaze of men. I understood that I would never be able to live in Jamaica and feel safe. And I couldn't imagine a life without partnership with women and came to the US to seek that and found here quite the freedom to be a lesbian in many, many pockets, particularly in New York City. But I also discovered the dissonance of being black inside of America. I came from a very poor beginning in Jamaica and I worked really hard to belong to a middle class. I did really well in school, I made it to the other side, made it to university. And when I came to America as an immigrant, I became not always of value because of my accent or as a new immigrant because of the clothes I could afford. Especially when I started traveling to the middle of America, people would just ask questions like, um, 
Jamaica, that's in Africa, right? I mean, I remember walking into Macy's and asking, like, can I look at that perfume? And the woman looking at me like, and she said to me, you know, it's $150 for the bottle. And I was like, o okay. I, I wasn't hmm. ready to know the price yet. I just wanted to know if I liked it. Mm -hmm. But she could tell, wrongly or rightly, but she, she assumed that I, I couldn't afford it. And so she, 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 she decided she wasn't going to spend a lot of time on me. And I became a poet. I started to voice my, my dissatisfaction with the nexus I had landed in. You know, like Jamaica wasn't perfect, but America wasn't perfect either, which meant that I kind of wasn't in this perfect place I thought I was going to go land in. Any push from the left has to be a multi-issue push in order to be successful. That you can't just be concerned about bodies that look like yours. You have to be concerned about all the bodies. People who don't look like you, people who don't sound like you, even people who do not believe what you do. And now that I'm, I'm, I'm a mom, that people look at my kid and they're all like, oh, she's so cute. Like, there's a way that I'm, I'm afraid of being seen as some kind, of, some kind of person who is in line with this whole, you know, conservative fucking bullshit. That because I had a baby, because I worked so hard to get pregnant and to stay pregnant and to have a kid, that I'm anti-abortion. I wanted to believe that that made me super, super, super supportive of every abortion rights in the country because that process is so hard mm -hmm. and you give up so much of yourself that if you do not want it, you should absolutely have the fucking right to say no. Call me stupid, call me idealistic, but I'm gunning for utopia. Do you feel that you've forgiven the people that have done things to you? I'm closer than I've ever been to understanding why people did the things they did to me as a kid and even understanding my own part in it as I grew older. A lot of the people who maybe abused me were themselves abused, and so I understand that they were like pawns in a larger structure of uh, abuse, which, you know, most of the time ends with like patriarchy and white patriarchy. But you have to be in, a, you have, you have to be in, in constant negotiation with yourself because those, those experiences, they never are completely wiped from your flesh that you wear them as memories, as uh, triggers, as uh, fears. When you understand it, you can see like, you recognize it and you can walk away from it. My biggest fear is that I will, I will do versions of what has been done to me to my own child. Most parents who hurt their children do so unwittingly. Mm -hmm. They don't know mm -hmm. that they're doing it. When do you feel the most vulnerable? When I'm unsure. And I think this period post, post pregnancy is when I've been most unsure. I don't know if I'm going to have the money to raise her the way that I want to. I don't know if I'm going to have the kind of home I want to raise her in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford the neighborhood I want to raise her in. When do you feel the most beautiful? The moment you take your clothes off in front of a new lover. And you know, you know that there are like scars everywhere or you know, places you would like to be different and then they still look at you and it's not like they're looking at you and seeing a body that isn't there so that when one day when they actually see the body they're gonna leave. <laughs> it, it's that they can actually see you and be, and be present with that and, and, and love that. Last question. Mm -hmm. um, why in your body is it a good place to be? I have to like say thank you to this mass of flesh that has been sitting here with me for 42 years. And for this body that allows me to continue interrupting, <laughs> speaking loudly and speaking out in places where motherfuckers don't want to hear. <laughs> but you know, this mouth is going to keep going until it's unable to. This body will keep moving. Amazing, thank you so much. <laughs> How do you feel? I, it was uh, interesting to, to note myself becoming more and more vulnerable as I wore less and less clothes, mm -hmm. as my neck became right. exposed and my shoulders and my arms and my legs. By the time I got to be like just in my skivvies, I was like, you know, it's hard to lie when you're wearing just panties. <laughs>